that we're going to do today, we, as you all, of those of you that have attended our, our open source meetings before, um, what we like to do is we like to kind of go through any of the open uh, pull requests, um, uh, maybe touch on the ones that have been already recently merged, um, and then we kind of chat about um, uh, any of the open pull requests and sort of where, you know, kind of try to explore what work needs to be done to get those merged, um, and then we, and then from there we pivot to our um, open source projects on Canny. Um, so with that in mind, uh, the agenda that I want to walk through today is I'm going to, let's walk through a bunch of recently merged open source projects because we've had several, and so I just want to give an update to all of you on that. Um, I'm also going to then touch on some of the recently completed open source project ideas um, that didn't necessarily come as open source, but we did do them. Uh, and then I want to walk through the active open source uh, pull requests, uh, kind of from top to bottom, where top is those that are closest to being merged, and bottom those that probably have more discussion around them. And then if we have any time left after that, then I thought we could walk through um, uh, the open uh, roadmap canny requests, uh, kind of starting with the, the, the trending ones and the new ones. So, all right, without further ado... Um, if you want to follow along with me, um, and you're on our GitHub page, um, you could open up the, the uh, you could go into the pull request sections and um, look at the uh, ones that are labeled open source and the ones that are labeled closed. Uh, and so I'm going to walk through those real quick. Um, first of all, we merged recently a open source uh, pull request from Hi-Fi Experiments, uh, which is uh, adding new uh, text effects and fonts to text entities. Um, this is in master right now. It's not. It did not get released in 83. It came in after 83, um, but it's pretty cool. So we added a whole bunch of new properties. Well, we, I say we, I should say an awesome open source contributor um, added a bunch of um, new properties to text entities. Uh, including fonts, uh, bold, strikeout, um, italics, um, uh, drop shadows, lots of cool features. So you will be able to use those in um, overlays, or well, local entities, and um, domain-based entities, and avatar entities. So uh, I'm sure some really cool effects will be done with that. Uh, that was a really fun... I, I gotta admit, I'm really psyched about that project, because... We actually had a developer in-house that was starting to work on that project for um, a project that, that we wanted to have that feature in a, a section of a new new part of the code base. And um, before that de in-house developer was able to do the work, um, a open source contributor actually uh, opened up a pull request that was uh, even more complete and robust than we'd originally planned internally. And so we were like, yes, we'll just merge that as is. That's awesome. So... Thank you very much to Hi-Fi Experiments. Um, we also merged uh, a bunch of uh, performance optimizations to shaders, um, and uh, the and actually in the last month we talked about the um, keyboard mapping uh, of uh, making duplicate duplicate entities and um, uh, the inspect tool work a little bit nicer together. We merged that. Uh, I think we're going to be making some further changes to that. That ac actually introduced a couple other bugs that were unexpected. So, but the headline there is we did uh, respond to your your the community's request to uh, change those mappings and merge that. So, that's all stuff that we've merged recently that came from the open source community. Um. If I pivot from that to those, obviously, uh, several of those were open source projects as well that were on Canny, um, and those have been I've marked those as as completed um, because they got merged. Um, we also had an open source request to uh, ship the avatar protection feature, um, and uh, it didn't come in as an open source uh, project, but we actually had enabled that uh, as part of 83 anyway. So there was a, a request from the community, um, but we, we shipped it as part of 83. So um, not exactly open source, but it came in through that request feed, and we did ship that feature. Um, 
So that's kind of stuff we've done since our last meeting that's been merged and shipped um, or merged into master. And so it's available for anybody that wants to grab the latest dev builds. Um, all right. So any questions or comments about those? I'll, I'll move on to uh, other open projects if, if there aren't any other questions. All right, silence is acceptance. Um, uh, all right, go. Th uh, so I'm going to go through the active pending open source project. So if you want to follow along with me, again, if you go to pull requests, uh, you check the open source tag, and then you click open. Uh, there's seven of those right now. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm not going to go in uh, sort order. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own random Brad's sort order. Um, so pull request uh, 15906 um, by um, Kason VR, uh, Kason VR plugin infrastructure v, v0.5, codename Modkit Mini. Um, this is really close to being merged. Uh, we really wanted to try to get it into 83, um, but uh, there was, I had, I had a really, um, I had a really great meeting with the developers on this. Uh, where we kind of talked about um, the goals as well as some feedback that our team had, um, and kudos to this uh, team. They they made they made these modifications really quickly uh, and got it to us. But it was just like it was like literally like the the day that we were cutting the code branch the co the branch for eighty three. And so, um, but uh, this is on our plate. We need to kind of do the code review. Um, I don't expect there to be any big requests uh, coming out of this. Um, I think that we'll probably be merging this one um, shortly. I, I just need to get some developers to kind of walk through the code and, and make sure it's uh, groovy to Um So that's probably on its way. And, and, and you know, um, if, I don't know that there's much more to, to talk about on that because um, it's, it's very close to being merged in. Um, does anybody have any questions about that PR or that feature? Anybody want to, do you want to, um, if the team, the case and yeah. VR team is here and would like to, to give an update on it, then that's cool. But I think the ball's kind of in our court right now, so. Um, well, it's, it's Kasson, Kasson. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Kasson. All right, I'll try <laughs> but, to, I apologize. Yeah. Wait, is it um, Kass Kasson? Well, you know, it's right, Kasson. Kasson. But, you know, Kassen would be even better. Well, then Kassen, but whatever. Okay. Anyway, Kassen, um, Kassen VR. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No, I really appreciate it that you guys are gonna take a look at it. I mean, the sooner the better, because I'd like to avoid merge conflicts where totally, possible. Totally, totally hear you on that. <laughs> I'll anything. try to. I'll try to. I'll try to uh, um, uh, shake the cage here in in okay. in 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 the office and get some people to look at it quickly. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so we have another PR that is up there. Uh, and I don't know, Sam, are you back? I am. Okay, good. I'm about to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, we got another open source PR up there. Um, it's called, uh, it's uh, PR 16015. Uh, uh, it says drastically reduce locking and branching necessary for render updates. It's from our friend Hi-Fi Experiments, mm -hmm. um, and I think this. I'm looking forward to getting this merge. I don't know if you've had any thoughts on on this. If you've had um, a chance to review it, um, no, not no, because that showed up on my radar on Monday, and I. Um, I will try to do my best now that I'm free. It looks like, uh, for what it's worth, it looks like. Um, Andrew uh, put in a bunch of code review feedback, and it's all been okay. addressed. So, um, uh, I think uh, I think that this is probably close. Okay. Um, but we just got to get a final yep. final dev approval on it. So that's cool. That's a that's a um, optimization. Thank you. Um, Uh, the remainder of the open PRs are all uh, relatively old. 
Um, uh, we've got a bunch of them up there uh, from Saracen 1. Right, the, the one about the FPX fix. Yeah, so Saracen 1, are you here? I don't, am I looking around the room and I'm not seeing you? Yes, sir. Not here today, I think. Maybe not here today. Um, I think uh, kind of the ball is back in the Saracen's court. I'm wondering where we're at with that because I'm wondering how much of that has been um, merged also. Uh, we we moved with fixes as well with uh, Ravinia's work. Yeah, might like, be worthwhile to maybe yeah. what we ought to do. Spinic with him. Yeah, I mean, I know at one point, I mean, it actually now looks like it's a relatively small change in FBX serialized CVP. I don't know, maybe maybe Sam, maybe what we could do is is right. Uh, have have your have someone on your team kind of adopt it. Totally. And okay, kind of mer get get it taken care of that way. It's a it's um, a, it looks like a pretty self-contained fix. Yes, 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 totally. Saracen said he'll try and be right over, so cool. We'll see if he can make it. Cool. Um. All right. Uh. So let's see. Um. Uh, FBX importer improvements. Um, what are you looking for? I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the currently open source. I think none of these have changed since we've we talked about them last month. So I I feel like uh, we're kind of they're kind of in a holding pattern um, uh, f on the side of the open source uh, developers. So. Um, uh, without further ado, I guess we could move to the talk about the open source uh, feature requests section. Um, well, actually, I, I, if I may, um, looking over this in GitHub, I see every single thing, every open PR that's marked open source has uh, an 84 milestone, except for one. Um, and that would be the procedural material entities on primitives and meshes. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't help but, but wonder about that. Hmm. Whether you have anything to say about that one. You mean that that one's left behind? It, it's Well, at the moment it is. Yeah, well, a couple things. One, that PR definitely has a, a merge conflict on it, so we it won't we wouldn't be able to merge it if we wanted to. That's thing number one. Oh, you should mark it there then. <laughs> well, it is it's it is marked there, right? It's marked on the PR. Um, mm, nope. Mm, yep. I mean, <laughs> down at I'm the sorry. bottom, branch contains conflicts that must be resolved. That's, that's a GitHub feature. It's like not something we add, right? Sorry, my, my VR browser is misbehaving. I didn't see it. <laughs> Um, you know, we've talked about this in the past. Um, the, the, the main issue here is that, um, you know, we, we would love to add this functionality, but we also have to do it in a way that, um, has a scalable solution on low end systems. And I think what you'll note is that in 83, we put a lot of time and energy into getting the engine to run on on lower end systems, on different operating systems. So our Mac builds of, of the interface are probably the most reliable Mac builds we've ever had at 83. Fabulous. Well, it looks um, like he's addressed that a little bit in right. terms of like, um, you know, they're just disabled by default. It's an optional feature that desktop users can enable. Yep. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say other than we like this feature but we need to do it in a in a in a way that doesn't cause more problems than it than it solves. <clears throat> okay. 
I'm just thinking as a, I'm, and I'm not, I don't want to take up too much time because I'm not one of the developers. It's just as, as one of the content creators, there are so many useful things I could do with this. And just terrain, just terrain alone, this would be a huge boon rather than trying to do 16 4K materials in a single mesh, right? Um, shaders would clean that right up. <laughs> um, if we, so what you're saying is the PR is, has built has a has an off by default status to it so you have to be a developer to turn it on or something is what you're saying and you're yeah. arguing that we should we should thus uh check in that code well i mean i'm not you know i'm not about to make uh well you're just saying demands yeah, that yeah, i like can't back it. I get, up I get but, it. yeah I get but it. yeah 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 i guess the question for brad and sam is when it's off does is there a threat that it like is the is the implementation does the PR create risk or or otherwise change the implementation of the rendering engine in the state when it's off or no but uh, probably you would experience the content differently also yeah I mean I, the reason that we haven't necessarily pulled the trigger on that mm -hmm. Philip is because mm -hmm. of our our traditional um, sort of ten commandments of you know we don't ship we try not to ship features that. Uh, cause content to appear broken to some people and not others. We don't always get it right, but that's certainly our one of our. No, yeah, and I, and I definitely understand that. Uh, to be fair, also there was a, a lot of uh, changes on the shader tool chain that I personally like. Uh, we, we worked a lot on like improving the shadering tool chain. That's not something that you can uh, touch on, but. Uh, we need to reevaluate that PR in light of that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's an interesting thing, Marcus. I mean, I think the conversation is really a good one. I've been thinking about a lot of issues of a similar sort lately as we look ahead and think about things we're going to do next. I mean, you guys know this, but I'll just restate it. It's a brutal problem because you want to have, I mean, we, I, I do too, right? It's like if there's a feature, you know, for some, like like the Pimax, right? You know, like if, if there's a capability or a feature that well actually sorry this is not a good example of that because that's a piece of hardware so that's fine you know just works for that hardware but this idea of shaders as soon as we turn that on and as soon as we have more users like second life does for example we'll have people at the meeting that are saying you are discriminating against people with old machines and we'll say but you can turn the feature off and then they'll say but then i can't see the person's out <laughs> you know what i mean so it's really yeah. a it is yeah, really uh, awful. Like it's, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give an answer here, but I'm just going to. Hopefully, everybody's thought this already, but I just want to say, like, I'm sorry that this one is a struggle, but it's by no means an easy one, because, like, as as the leader of, you know, formerly of Second Life, it it is not a winnable war. It's one of the things that just makes me put my head in my hands about all this stuff. Because it's, yeah, it's, when I don't turn it on for you, of course, you're like, my God, I can't believe, Philip, that you wouldn't just let me turn on those shaders. I love shaders. I love shader toy. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to rock and roll. The world's going to be crazy on 10% of the computers. <laughs> and then you get this whole, like, problem that we have with VR, right? Which is it's highly not inclusive right now, you know? Like, only <laughs> the people that have the specialized machines that can run the shaders run the shaders, you know? It's just like... <laughs> But, of course, they're very future-looking, you know? I mean... I don't know if that... We're not hearing you. Yeah, they, person who's, Marcus, who's, Mark... I don't think it was Marcus, was it? Somebody was breaking up for me. wouldn't it be an idea to have that as, like, an open market? I think that might be serious. to the domain owners. If people complain because you got, like, a full-blown 2080 Ti Pimax experience and they don't see anything low-level machines aren't going to visit you anymore. Yeah, so it's up to the domain mm. owner yeah, right. to decide what experience for which target audience they want to present. Yeah, I just think want that to think through chaos. That's a good one to think through. I mean, that that's certainly a proposed idea that, that, that we could ponder. I mean, maybe that's a way of doing it. Yeah, so I mean, just to just to clarify, so Marcus asked the question, hey, Brad, why did you skip the discussion of the procedural shader thing? We're all here to convince you that we want procedural shaders, right? <laughs> I mean, let's, yeah. let's, let's, call it, let's call it what it is, right? Um, look, we, we would love to merge this procedural shader thing, and, but we need to, we, we know that we, to, to, to all of the issues that Philip raised, 
and to all the efforts that we've put in to significantly improve the performance and reliability of the system. Um, this one is a hard one. We want to merge this. We love we love this idea of this feature uh, in general, um, but we know that if we kind of merge it as is, uh, we cause more technical debt and more frustration for more users uh, than we than we solve. The other thing and, with shaders until we, is until we can figure out a better answer. The other thing yeah. I ponder with shaders, you guys, and maybe this is a work in progress that we can all contribute to. I'm struck by how many aspects of our world building we're all doing are still so early that they're certainly not the final version. And shaders feels to me like one of those things. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the way shaders are implemented right now across the board, VR chat, anything, everything, is basically kind of a hack when you talk about it for virtual worlds, right? Because whether you're talking about performance or uh, you know, memory use, potential bandwidth use, depending on how you implement, you know, multiplayer stuff. These these shaders are, they feel to me like, like a very early feature that's not worked out yet. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be some way of doing shaders that is right, and we're certainly not there yet, right? Because basically what we're doing is we're just porting in the full manifold of shader capabilities into virtual worlds where they certainly don't work, right? And so the thing, the, the other question I'm struck by is, is there a long-term vision for shaders that we can all sit down and get to that actually works for multi-person virtual worlds, you know? Because I, I think, I mean, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think shaders don't work for stuff like VR chat, right? There's a they, very they, circumscribed set of capabilities, they, and it's depending on which, X, right? Well, just, well just, to, yeah, just to clarify, I think that uh, depending on what your definition of does it work or not, like if the question of does it work is, on my super badass gamer machine, do me and my friends have a good time when I show when I come to the world that has my shaders working? I think the answer is, yeah. For we could do that. We could enable this, and that's we would have that level of working. Um, and that's the level of working that exists in a handful of other um, uh, open world, open buildable worlds that support quote procedural shaders, like. Well, one um, thing I was thinking, I was hearing Marcus, you were talking about using it for terrain. Yes, is, is I mean, I, yeah, and I'd even so be can happy. I walk on? Can I walk on the terrain created by a shader? Well, no. See, I'm not looking to. I want to texture a mesh oh, with okay. a shader. See, that's okay. where I'm going. And if I had, you know, I'd be happy with like you know a special tool for that or something. But unfortunately, I can't do that. Right? It's shaders or nothing for me right now. Uh, yeah, and um, I mean, uh, right, I'm right. a, I'm a big. <laughs> we had that internal debate and for a long, long time. And uh, uh, as the guy who is trying to make that work, I can tell you that I would much rather like find a clean uh, uh, design for a solution that expose a set of parameters rather than a full-fledged shader. And I give you the, the shader and you start building it. And it's not compiling on most of the machine except for yours because yours is NVIDIA and you're right, you get the right driver and stuff like that. And so maybe maybe the question isn't do we need like to be able to have general purpose, you know, anybody be able to write a shader, but are there cases that could be, uh, that shaders could address that could be, you know, made in a, a creator friendly fashion? Right. Yeah, um, I mean, that, it, that's, that's, yeah, let's kind of, right. let's again, let's call this for what it really is. So I don't, I mean, I'm going to call it out here. There's two people in this room that are going to write a shader. The rest of you are going to cargo cult a shader from somebody else, right? And in fact, what you really want is a, uh, a reflective uh, GUI that, and you want shader developers who uh, expose the um, parameterization of their shaders in a, in a, in a, in a useful, friendly, um, uh, documented way. Right, there's kind of, but Marcus, yeah, I mean, to Brad's point, that it is a good point. There's kind of two cohorts here, right? Marcus, you are saying you want naked shader toil style access. You want to, you want to attach code to a primitive, right, and have it run. That's the. I would love that, but I would settle for the but, other one. But yeah, the but question, just to, I mean, to, but but to the, clarify, Marcus, are you actually going to write a shader from scratch, or are you going to grab something off of an existing uh, uh, coded shader and kind of well, tweak, I, I tweak the I'm parameters? 
I'm hardly going to pretend that I'm a, a shader guru. That's that's very you know difficult. And God, I wish I remember my uh, 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 my math from high school that they said I I would use and I never did. The dot product has come back to me. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, uh, I have in fact written a, a very simple you know very simple shader from scratch, very useful ones. Um, and you know, with time, of course, I, I'm one of those people who will learn. Um, but yeah, I I, I, your, point, trying, your point, your point, however, take anything away from your, your point, however, that. is taken in that it is a black art. Very few people will write the shaders. I agree. Um, which is why I brought up the idea of maybe there's just some missing, uh, use cases for shaders that could be filled. Um, One of the things I was, I'm just, I have kind of a general question for like Sam and for you, Marcus, and for Brad, and maybe mostly for Sam, which is. Isn't it the case, Sam, that so if if we have access, if the shader has access to the GPU, you know, and it basically has, you know, I can write code. Can't I write a halting? You know, can can I write an infinite loop? In other words, yes. Can I come to this meeting and basically stop this meeting? Yes. With, yes. Absolutely. Is that true, Marcus? Oh yeah, definitely. So how do we protect for that, you guys? Uh, don't run shaders. I mean, maybe like Chaos is saying, it's just, it's like a sandbox, you know, and the person's, like, no, most but people the don't use it. But the problem is, as soon as it's tied to your identity, right, you guys? As yeah, soon the as PR, it's tied the to PR, Chaos is going to put a shader on her hair. The, the PR she's going to be we're super pissed off that it's not working when the she's PR that voices, we're right? The PR that we're discussing supports shaders on avatars. Yeah. Like, that's the point of it. I mean, that's the thing that's the... really hard here. The answer is um, filters, blacklists, and things like that. Yeah, right, right, right. Which is not in, which is not included in that PR. Um, so... I, thought, I, I, I thought it could like you could hock into it, can't you? You can, It's pretty simple to write some kind of client side script that can like de you know, that can detect people when they've spawned and see what's attached to them. Right? I think Sam told me that was the case. I can't remember. That was a while ago. Oh, that that filter stuff that's on the domain server. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, no, I don't think that filter stuff, but like, I think you can still hook into the, the way it's implemented. I think you can still write scripts that can act as essentially filters. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure if, if, if it's client side, it's, I guess the question is to ask, is anyone genuinely worried right now that people would use this for malicious things? Because the worst I think anyone can do is maybe crash your instance. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I think there maybe needs to be a call to be a little bit more bold and a little not be worrying as, quite about this as, as much. As the guy oh. who gets the phone call from the security <laughs> press to deal with the exploit, I I don't I just don't have enough well, I just I, don't have enough uh, uh, ulcer protection in my stomach. How much can I be a How much can bold. I do with a shader? Can I reformat your hard drive? No, no. no you can you no. can only it's it's GPU only. Right. So Okay. Uh, but it's yeah, very low level GPU, sure. so yeah. you can be evil right. in, in there. Yeah. yeah. Can I burn yeah. here's the thing, can I burn out your graphics card? Ouch. Mm, I, Probably not. not. I think they have inbuilt protections, driver. don't they? Yeah. They have the, dog, yeah, uh, the yeah. watchdog, and the watchdog is going to trigger yeah, when your you GPU is going to get stuck for five seconds. Oh, so I could blue, basically I could blue screen your Windows 10 yeah. machine. Yeah, totally. Uh, with a actually, shade. actually, isn't there like a thing in Second Life called the graphics crusher? So maybe in Second Life, but yeah, well, I mean, here. um, yeah, it's an interesting yeah, issue. The, the other, the other high level point I'd make about this, and we've all we've been talking about this internally, and I think this is really an important consideration for this group and for all our work going forward. We've, I was going to blog about this earlier today. We, we, we need to solve this public, we need to solve the public safety issue. We, I mean, let me, let me just say, you know, um, whether it's through contrib contributions from open source or, or work from high fidelity, I've been kind of looking at the industry and I'm, I'm looking at how, if we don't come up with a way for people to generally behave well in public where they don't know each other you know new people that you know like people come to a meeting like this we're all screwed <laughs> none of this lifts off i mean we don't have our public areas open in part because they're melee grounds you know and it's an interesting problem you know as as we all know vr chat solves it by not solving it which is they basically just drop people into many different start locations right so you have a incredibly uh discontinuous experience and then they don't have community meetings for the most part you know that are like open to all kind of thing and so it's a 
it's a really, really daunting problem. I think there are good solutions. We've talked about a lot of them, but I just want to throw that out there, that I, I think we have a kind of a moral imperative, as John Carmack has said, to make virtual worlds safe and inclusive, you know, and, 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 and happy, you know. People need to behave fairly well in public and not the solution is not as has been discussed you know at SIGGRAPH and stuff like that I think I was just listening to him talk about this the solution is not to fall back to saying well I'll only do VR with people I know you know my friends and family I mean that's just ridiculously foreshortening the opportunity you know that I don't even care you know if if, if VR is only ever going to be between my friends and family I, I'm, I'm out you know I don't even care about VR so I think there's an interesting challenge there that we're we're, we're going to see unfold i i've got some ideas about how to solve it but that's not the point i was trying to make i'm not i'm not pitching my ideas i'm more just pointing out to everybody that this shader thing is an example of that right because if you, if you can just be super malicious with a shader you know then what you have to have is not so much not just the controls on the shader and you know performance and digital keys or you know certifications or whatever but but also a general bias of people toward being good to each other as you turn on these more powerful features because like brad said marcus i don't i it's far from it is far from clear to me that if we pull that pr we won't have many many instances where you guys get your server shut down by somebody that just thinks it's funny to bring a shader there i honestly think the bigger worry is less about people potentially being malicious with this and more about people being ignorant of how to this use case, this i agree yeah exactly i'm sure you guys if i i love I, i've been meaning to learn shaders for a while i'm sure that one of my first few shaders will handily take down your servers so. it's like people building a second life and having no idea of how to optimize stuff you know it's the same thing yeah. I still think, though, that the argument about the, that particular argument is kind of a moot point because there's still plenty of other ways you can give people a bad experience just by not knowing, like, not having enough technical know-how. Um, I've actually have a conversation. Uh, I'll, I'll no, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it to later. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's I feel okay. like I'm, I I need to channel Ashley um, now that Saracen's here and say we should. This <laughs> VR. <laughs> Yeah, did it's you? Not, I, you got called in, Saracen. Just, just a double check. We, we, you got, you got kind of invited to come in only because we. I didn't know part, it was happening. Sorry. Uh, no worries, no worries. Um, I, 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 I have a feeling I know what you're gonna say when I, when I say this. We, we had an agenda item just now. We, we go, th we went through a bunch of PRs that got merged, and then we went through a bunch of PRs that are right on the edge of being merged, um, and then uh, there's a handful of PRs that are up there that you are the amazing contributor behind and thank you very much for Yay. that um that are kind of pending and i know there was some feedback for you and and the, in our last meeting i know you're a very busy person so you yes have not probably. had a chance yes you haven't had a chance to my respond. apologies no it's okay it's okay we really super value the fact that you contribute everything that you do contribute so um in no way is it anything that you need to apologize for but i did want to say if there has been an update on your side and you'd like to rattle our cages so that we we pay attention uh, to what you've done then this uh, is an opportunity nah, for you to sorry no no updates. if uh, if anything is updated i will post comments on the repos they'll most yeah that's usually how i'll provide updates cool Did everyone? Oh. Uh, no, no. I, I, drop off, I thought the audio <laughs> dropped for a second. <laughs> Awkward <laughs> silence. I just feel like I derailed everything, and I think after that, Brad was going to move on. No, but you are getting back at loss, Marcus. Yeah, it's weird, Marcus. It's almost like... Uh, That's true. Yeah, I don't know. It's I had to have to double check to see, but it does seem like you're getting some packet loss. By the way, I just have to say I can't believe I'm sitting here having a conversation with a white mouse about... Uh, sh shader development. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like it's so surreal. I'm, my my brain gets bent every time we have one of Should these have conversations. Should seen them with the MythBusters. <laughs> oh. I do want to say something. I am on a uh, MacBook Pro, and I just want to let you know that um, um, that the graphics are uh, uh, improving. 
a little bit more as Good. I go on here a lot more. Yeah. We wanted to get this out for you guys because we've done so much internal, meaning 83, because we've been doing so much internal work on the uh, on the desktop use case, you know. Yeah, I also I want to also say that the same thing. I'm on I'm on a PC right now, but my MacBook Pro actually can get into high fidelity at work on Wi-Fi. So and it never yeah. could before. So that's really a strong performance improvement. Awesome. Merci bien. Yeah, I'm on a MacBook Pro right now, as I'm sure several several other of the high fidelity ends around the table are. Cool. All right. Well, I guess what we could do next uh, at um, Marcus's uh, encouragement is we could pivot to the next part of the conversation. We have about 18 minutes left of the originally scheduled time. So um, what we would like to do is kind of go through the um, uh, roadmap.highfidelity.com uh, open items. Um, and let me do a quick search to make it be... I gotta figure out how to use this UI. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna do the newest ones. Um, uh, okay, so um, sorted in newest order. Um, uh, let material entities specify backface culling method. Um, material entity HiFi PBR model should support a field like cull face uh, with options like back, front, normal. Um, have the pipeline support all three support should support fall through um, where did Sam go there he is um, uh, I mean so I, I'll summarize this as a you know clearly uh, this is a, a great example of like you know additional flexibility in the engine for someone who's building content and trying to do some interesting uh, effects with the triangles of their models um, I don't know, Sam, do you feel like this is something that is a relatively, can this be done in our pipelines in a way that um, you, you feel like would not introduce uh, performance problems? Can this be done in both forward and deferred rendering? How do you feel about this? Uh, help me out. Like, I, I, I'm displaying the, the list. Which one are we talking about? Here, of? I'll send you a quick link to it. Is that procedural materials? on mat No, this is a uh, um, let entity material uh, let material entities specify backface calling method oh sure cool awesome love it let's do it yeah cool so if you uh run into sam gondelman hi-fi experiments out there in the metaverse or if you want to jump in on a a, a, a pr and introduce that then I we, we we love the sound of it my question would be is there a gltf version of that I can't remember if there was. I was actually looking at the spec for all of this stuff. I know there was stuff for um for cutout, but I don't know if it actually is part of the spec. I'll have to I'll have to double check that. Like one of the things that I've um observed at uh SIGGRAPH last week was how much we a lot of companies or a lot their 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 feature set to GLTF capabilities. So this is becoming some of my uh, referee now. I'll just uh, I'll look it up. You know, especially with Blender 2.8, uh, because mm -hmm. if it's always the same issue, it's the problem of the tool chain. If you have a tool chain that lets you do it, then it's great. Um, all right, cool. Well, with that note, I left a comment on there, um, uh, basically saying that generally speaking, we like it, but that to Sam's point. Um, it does kind of matter about the file format and whether there's native support for this property in the tool chain. Hmm. Um, and so, um, yeah, we can. So, somebody can circle back and leave a comment on that. That'd be that'd be great. Um, Interesting. So this next uh, newest item uh, I think is. It is. Hang on. Okay. Also, you have the text shaders. Yeah, so the next newest item is proce procedural <laughs> vertex shaders, and, and we kind of did talk a lot about that just now. We talked a lot about the notion of uh, uh, <laughs> expensive shaders. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Philip, you raised a really interesting... This is, I think, where you were trying to raise the question about um, can you walk on a procedural vertex shader, right? Um, 
uh, that's a really good example of something that um, no, you definitely would. I mean, I don't see how you could. It would be very interesting to be able to support truly physical procedural uh, vertex shaders. <laughs> um, to say the least, right? <laughs> to say the GPU least. GPU to bullet. Um, you know, I feel like this one, I feel like we've kind of uh, talked this one out, and so you all know where we're coming from on this one. This is very much similar to the, uh, you know, the further procedural shader stuff. You know, I, again, I think we like the general idea of it, and we're just trying to figure out how to do it in a way that um, can be done safely and can be done um, without uh, too much headache for lower-end systems. Um, I mean, this wouldn't work at all. Uh, Sam, how, what our current our current um, Mac pipeline and other pipelines that are using um, variations of OpenGL to do. Do they do they all support um, vertex shaders or are those um, yeah, extensions yeah. only? No, no, they would, mm -hmm. they would, but uh, it is the. Uh, I mean, uh, I could talk uh, even an another five hours about it. Okay. <laughs> well, and I won't. Why, don't, why don't we move on to the? Oh, all right. Then I'll save my question. No, go ahead. Uh, you know what, I have on my domain, Franny, I have the canal, and I have the water is running with a script in it that's a shader that's right. different than a vertex shader, right? Right, right. Um, every time we introduce a new shader, it is a new source of potential failure if we do not pay enough attention to the way we uh, add it. By that, what I mean is, some somebody well-intentioned is going to develop a shader, and then if we just like copy paste and use it as is, there's no guarantee at all that it will work. On at least, if it, if it's like okay, it's good, it's good, but it's still not. You still may may have errors, and it won't compile on such and such hardware. And that's that. Basically, packaging packaging of a shader as an asset that we need to think about, which will give us a, a point in the tool chain where we can like assess that it's uh, good to go or not. Okay. And I'm very uh, reluctant to let to uh, to to move forward with the shaders before we get that in place. I get it. So they're a big strain, but nobody who's come to my domain has had problems with it. So I guess it's okay. Well, because I remember we hammered that we a bunch of times on. <laughs> there was a, a a bunch of uh, occurrences in the past uh, year or so that we had to come back to that shader. I remember uh, because one day Nvidia, I remember that one. Nvidia show up with a new driver and that shader doesn't compile anymore. And they're like, what? <laughs> Stuff complex. like that. Yeah, it's very complex. Um, at SIGGRAPH, I was at one of the course, which is uh, one of my favorite, called Open Problems in Rendering in the Rendering Industry for Real Time. Rendering Real Time, like so that speaks to games, that speaks to companies like ours. One of the number one problems they talked about is exactly that, even for game. Because game, they can uh, basically go through all the shaders they're going to ship with, and have an army of, of tester. That's 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 a lot of energy, but that works. If you want to do, if you want to use shader as content, as an as a piece of asset, that's where you're starting uh, having troubles like the one we are having. Meaning that you want to let the users to do whatever they want with the shaders within the context of the framework of the engine. And that that is a piece which is still an important problem, honestly. It's not like, it's not research, it's not like a crazy research on mass or whatever. It's more like pragmatical engineering about how do we solve the problem that has been solved with C++ 20 years ago? How can I, how can I make libraries of shaders that I can guarantee are working on all the x86 in the world? Yeah. We, we don't know how to do that with GPUs right now. That's hard, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. thank you for that answer. That's a that's a great explanation, Sam, and it's one of the reasons that I think that you know I just kind of um, emphasize some of what he's he's pointing out is that this is why it gives us such deep pause when we when we see the really cool effects like the water shader, 
and and we're like, yeah, that's really cool. Um, and then, you know, the number of bugs that have been filed in our bug tracking system about that that particular that single shader alone on different uh, operating systems, different uh, driver versions, different video cards. Um, and so it's 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 enough for us to understand that this is, you know, this is the challenge that we face. And so, in general, I would say that if we could come up, I mean, to kind of go back to the next, by the way, the next the next request is GPU particles with custom rendering updating shaders. Um, so, again, it's sort of similar topic um, uh, about the idea of a particle system that's using, um, you know, some kind of a strategy for, for using the GPU for both the rendering of the particles as well as potentially the um, calculation of, of the particles. Um, you know, each of these, we think that we need to kind of think through what the implications are, and we're trying to find out a way to do it that doesn't um, completely, uh, uh, you know, open up more of a can of worms than we already have opened. So I think that's where we stand on that one. Um, Right, so the one called GPU particles for custom rendering, updating your shaders? Yeah. I mean, I would be uh, in favor of developing a GPU uh, shader that we design and opening up that, that up with properties to be able to, do, yep. to configure the way it, it looks. So it's a much faster, of course, than CPU and uh, and also like give you enough control that you want to do things the, your way. Yeah, I mean that's a good exa that's a good that's maybe a good discussion point for for you all as a community. So when you ask for custom shaders, what Sam is saying is something that's a little easier for us to to bite off. We feel like it can be done. I mean, it's it's work, but it's something that um, we feel addresses some of these secu you know uh, uh, performance slash security slash uh, griefing vectors is if we were to instead say, well, what people really want when they say I want procedural um, particles is they're saying, I want more customization and more parameterization because I'm not really, I don't really want to write a shader that does particles, but what I would love it is if your particle system allowed me to, to change more of the features than it currently lets me change. Um, uh, so if, if that would meet a lot of your needs, then that's the kind of PR that we would uh, definitely uh, get merged uh, quicker. So, you know, one of the purposes of this part of our meeting here is to kind of help inspire those of you that are going to write PRs and push PRs to us, um, inspire you to, to focus on them on the way that will be easier for us to digest and merge into the code base. Right. A lot of times this meeting turns into you all trying to convince us that that we should accept a PR or, or put some code in. Um, but one thing that the other, this is two-way street, so it's like if we can kind of let you all know, you know, we would definitely be cl really fast at merging a PR that it optimized uh, particle systems, uh, moved them into the GPU, had a shader that uh, had nitpick tests that can be run against uh, multiple different operating systems and and shader and, and driver types. And you know, added a bunch of new cool uh, properties for for cost customization. On that note, I'd I'd just like to to point out, um, I I never intended to sound like, <laughs> you know, we want this and we want this now. Um, no, <laughs> um, yeah, we want it done well too, and we know that you guys have priorities that are very important. Um, your guys are focused on LilyPad. Uh, we get that. Um, and uh, we want you to succeed. Right. Um, so don't please don't think that we're 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 just you know greedy greedy I think, people. <laughs> I think I think one of the things Marcus is is that one of the reasons this shader thing is so hard is because in, in and again here I'm going to just sort of step back and say this is my you know sort of strategic perspective on this as a as a long time VR developer. We don't have the content model right yet for in world building in general. Right. In other words. The, the model for what, you know, say Tim Sweeney's version of the metaverse, for those who have read his, you know, talks about this, <coughs> nobody knows yet what the right content model is. And this shader issue and, and numerous other issues we've had 
like 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 what we're talking about, you know, like the bugs bugs reported on the shader that's running in you know Franny's you know you know water in her domain. It's a really nasty problem because you get this local optimization danger, which happens in a lot of platforms where everybody wants to have like like what we're talking about right now, and you know, which is the full capability of shader architecture as it's been developed, kind of at the lowest level of the GPU, right? Which is what we're talking about. But the problem is that once you allow people to begin building content using that language, you'll have this problem that your community will you'll you'll kind of never be able to back out of that capability because content will be built around it, you know, and it'll be like, oh my God, but you know, the public meeting hall was done with that shader. We can't turn that shader thing off now, you know? And so that's a kind of a really nasty aspect of anything that, in, that, is, that is at the junction between the code itself and then user generated content. So it's, it's brutal. And I think that we're gonna have to continue to reckon with that stuff. It's just, it's, it's just incredibly, it's incredibly hard. Like with Second Life, there's, all these features of Second Life that are totally brutal bugs that have had to have been left in over the years because people began using that broken feature to create content. And basically, we had to err on the side of never changing the feature. And so we were left with a broken platform because we had to keep the content working. And I, again, I, I say that without knowing the right answers, you know, but I certainly think the outcome was suboptimal, you know. I'm gonna have to run for another call, so I'm gonna have a hard stop today. But yep, we've got we've everybody. got two two more minutes. Um, uh, cool. Well, on that note. Um, hey, Brad, uh, I got a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't you be trying to run now? It's still two minutes. But um, my question is, the build bot does indeed handle Linux uh, right now. And my question is, since you guys are moving towards enterprise as well, um, can we get more consideration to maybe distributing uh, the Linux client as a whole? Because so many people try to compile it and make it work, and they just, like the servers too, like they, they, they just have so much trouble running it, you know? So if you guys distributed that with PR builds at the very least, I think that it would be very helpful to many people. So I will say we would love for somebody to put up an open source PR that, that so first of all, we build the Linux build all the time internally, and yeah. the only the only issue here is that it doesn't have like a a, a package. But um, you absolutely could. We we compile the Linux. We run the Linux compile. The C makes run. So um, if you, I mean, the issue here is we have never decided to productize the Linux um, player. Like, does should it be a, a a package? Should it be a you know, you know, is app get the way to do it? Should we just put it in a zip file, whatever? So uh, what I would say to you is we are definitely not ever going, we're not in the near future. I mean, we don't have any customers asking for that. But I agree with you that that'd be cool. So if you wanted to make an open source PR that essentially kind of made some kind of a Linux client package, uh, then we would su we'd be super excited about that. We would definitely that would be a project we'd love to approve and merge. Oh well, I, I mean, I suppose so. Uh, um, well, even without productizing it, I think that maybe just making it available under the PR belts. You know how like it shows Mac, uh, Android, Windows, all that junk. Well, you know, just throwing the Linux with it. Um, and I guess that's one place to put it where no one really expects it to, you know, be an actual product and work perfectly, but it's available. I I think that would be a good place to start. Mm. Why don't you write up a description of a task on Canny and see if we can figure out how to do that? Um, I think there's a little bit more to it than you're suggesting but maybe I'm not thinking of it um, completely so um, uh, just just to clarify are you talking like a are you talking like a tarball like you just want a tarball of like the domain server and assignment client artifacts that were built by the uh, PR Linux yeah yes. that's one such example yeah see that this is the yeah, this is this is the thing I'm saying. Like, I'm not quite sure what it means to have the Linux build available. Hmm. Well, if the tarball was available, that that might actually be useful, even if it were very very specific. Like, if it were 
an Ubuntu 1604 or something uh, tarball so that you could have a PR and then you could like download the server and like replace you know place the replace the version in your Dropbox or your um, Droplet uh, to test out new features and stuff. Yeah, I guess I'm, all I'm saying is I'm not debating whether that's a good idea or not. I'm asking you to tell me what you think is the idea. <laughs> like that's what I'm huh, saying. Okay. Like, Fair so, enough. You know, to your point, Tim, if it's if the proposal is, hey, you basically build the code anyway. And you, we can see it in the log files. You know, we we know that when there's an error, uh, you know, a warning or something, we know that you guys build it. Uh, so what we really want is the tarball of the output of the build system. Like maybe that's what you're asking for. And sure, maybe maybe that is the right thing for us to do. Um, but I'm just asking, like, give us it. Yeah, put it, something put it into like a, that. Put it into the form of a of a, a kind of a proposal that we can digest how hard that would be for us. Well, um, thanks everybody. I've got to get to another meeting here. Um, I hope you okay. had. A, I hope it was useful on the. Um, I hope that Sam's presentation was useful. I know he put a lot of time and energy into it. Um, thanks. Thank you again, Sam, for that presentation. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and I I did note and it is on video that Sam volunteered to do another one. Uh, uh, we gave him <laughs> topics to discuss. I was a little Run surprised away. by that, but um, hey, you know, cause I felt like I had to twist Woo. his arm to do the first one, but uh, so he really? he had so much fun that he's going to do another one. So um, we'll we'll figure out that much. We'll figure out the timing and and the topic on that, um, and and let you all know probably at the next open source. Thank so, you again. Thanks all. Wonderful. Cheers. Bye -bye. And thanks again Cheers. for all the – thank you again to all of you that contributed um, uh, yeah. PRs that, and that have been merged or, or are about to be merged. We really do appreciate that. So thank you very much. And without uh, any more, bye-bye. See you guys later. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank awesome. you again. God, my LOD hit the 